Welcome to our experiment of the bisyncaninic acid assay, also known as the BCA assay. The objective of this lab is to determine the total protein concentration of our sample by using the BCA assay. The BCA assay primarily relies on two reactions. First, the peptide bonds of your protein reduce copper 2 ions to copper 1, which is a temperature dependent reaction. The amount of copper 2 reduced is proportional to the amount of protein present in the solution. Next, two molecules of BCA cleate with each copper plus ion, forming a purple colored complex that strongly absorbs light at a wavelength of 562 nanometers. The BCA copper complex is influenced in protein samples by the presence of cysteine, tyrosine, and tryptophan side chains. At higher temperatures, such as 37 degrees Celsius, the peptide bonds assist in the formation of the reaction complex. Some of the advantages of the BCA assay is that it exhibits extreme sensitivity, up to 100 times more sensitive than the Bradford assay. It is compatible with a wide range of detergents and other extraneous materials. It is applicable over a wide range of protein concentrations, usually from 0.5 mg per ml to 1.5 mg per ml. And it provides greater protein-to-protein -protein uniformity and produces a low variance in color change even when different types of proteins are used. Some disadvantages of the BCA assay include that an overabundance of cysteine, tyrosine, and tryptophan may affect the accuracy of the results. Reducing agents such as DTT, beta mercaptanol, copper cleating agents, certain lipids or phospholipids may interfere with the results. And it requires prolonged incubation time, usually 30 minutes to two hours. Another type of protein assay you may be familiar with, or that you may have done in a previous lab at UTEP, is called the Bradford protein assay. The Bradford assay is based on the ability of Kumasi blue to bind directly with protein molecules in the sample, causing the dye to change color from a brownish red to a blue color, which has an absorbance of 595 nanometers. This assay is different from the BCA assay in that it is quicker and easier to perform However, it is incompatible with surfactants. This may cause certain reagents to precipitate. The Kumasi dye is very acidic and it cannot be used with certain proteins with poor acid solubility. It may result in high protein to protein variation. It has a high sensitivity to basic and aromatic amino acids such as arginine, histidine, and lysine. And the Kumasi absorbs to glassware, clothing, and skin, making it somewhat dangerous. In order to start this experiment, we will first start by making our BSA standards, or bovine serum albumin. Um, we will then place 60 microliters of water into tubes labeled 2 through 7. Then we will place 60 microliters of our BSA stock into tube number 2, followed by taking another 60 microliters from tube 2 into tube 3, um, followed by another 60 microliters from 3 to 4, and so on. This is referred to as a serial dilution, and each tube will have its concentration of BCA lowered by half. So we will end up with concentrations of our BCA standards as 2000, 1000, 500, 250, 125, 62.5, and 31.25 micrograms per ml. Twenty-five microliters of water will be placed in duplicate onto the 96 well plate. This just serves as a blank for the spectrophotometer. Then twenty-five microliters of the standards will be added to the 96 well plate also in duplicates, in order to allow us to average the values.
The yeast sample from last class will be resuspended in 100 microliters of 8 molar urea. This will allow for the sample to be lysed in order for the internal proteins to be released. The sample was then vortexed for two minutes. After this, the sample was diluted eight times using water. That way the urea would not be at a high enough concentration to interfere with the BCA. After this, 25 microliters of the sample was then added to the plate. The working reagent has to be mixed in order for it to be usable. It consists of a 50 to 1 dilution of buffer A and B. 200 microliters of this working solution will then be placed into each well of the plate. The plate was then covered and incubated at 37 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes in order to allow the reaction between copper and BCA to occur. Incubating the BCA assay at higher temperatures is recommended as a way to increase assay sensitivity while minimizing the variances caused by unequal amino acid composition. The plate was then read on a spectrophotometer at a wavelength of 562 nanometers.